are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diaries. Okay, ragazzi, che cosa stiamo facendo oggi? We are on our way to Dorset in the southwest of England. We are going to have a cliffside walk along the coast at Durdle Door. Possibly stop for lunch at Lulworth Cove, which is a perfectly circle-shaped cove. And it's where Carlo had the best pie ever. He's always going on about this pie that he ate there. And then we're going to drive to Shaftesbury and drop Skye off to see her friends. in the little village of Shaftesbury and we're just going to take Tommaso to see the view over there. Now this is the town where Sky went to school for the last five years and this little village has one of the most photographed streets in Britain. Just down here it's called Gold Hill. This street was famous for a advert in the, I think it was the late 70s or the early 80s for bread and it featured a little boy on a bicycle delivering loads of bread down this beautiful old English street. And then just up from the little street there's this beautiful viewpoint with a lovely long walk to do. It's lovely when it's sunny. Now, I get asked all the time why did I send Sky to school in England? Um, well, as I am English, Sky is half English, so I did want her to grow up in touch with her English side as well. And also, um, I just find the Italian school system was very different from the English school system. And I think, to be honest, she was more suited to the English way of learning. So the school we chose is Shaftesbury School here. It is a state boarding school. That means that the schooling is free and is funded by the state. And the boarding department is separate and I paid for that. So not as expensive at all as a private boarding school, which there's no way I would have been able to afford, but I could just scrape together enough to send her to the school here. The prices have gone up quite significantly since uh, she started six years ago, but that's fine. She's finished now, so <laughs> don't have to worry about it anymore. We left Sky in Shaftesbury, and now we are going to the beach. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Again. <laughs> oh, man. Left Sky in Shaftesbury and now we are going to the beach. Bello. <laughs> Bello. <laughs> oh, we keep teasing Carlo because he keeps saying wow. You probably noticed in the videos he keeps saying wow a lot and he's got it in his head now. And uh, so we're trying to stop him from saying wow. <laughs> No, we're not going to make a t-shirt with wow on it either. Va fare una collezione di magliette. Ok. Vi facciamo vedere quando arriviamo, dai. Also, we have just driven past Monkey World and we have also just driven over the River Piddle, which was very amusing for me. And after a complete change of outfit, because I happen to have a warmer coat in the car and a hat, we are now at Lulworth Cove. Just sit behind me. We'll go and visit the cove afterwards. 
and we're walking up to go and see Durdle Door. There's nothing quite like a bracing winter's walk across a blustery cliff top. It sweeps away the cobwebs and leaves you feeling alive and energised. I've been here too in the late spring though and it is even more beautiful with bright blue skies contrasting against the yellow of the beach and the green of the cliff tops. I would walk along the cliff path and then descend to the beach where I'd watch the people swimming, picnicking, dog walking and having fun. I wondered, if I lived in England, would this be something I would do with family and friends? A picnic hamper, muddy boots, a flask of hot tea and a blanket to lie on? I'm sure that would be me in another life. Durdledore is one of the most photographed landmarks in Dorset and it is a World Heritage Site. It is found on the busiest section of the South West Coast Path, which is the UK's longest national trail covering 630 miles. And if you're thinking that it looks familiar, you might recognise it from films such as Nanny McPhee, Wild, Far From The Madding Crowd and the Tears For Viz Shout video. Pasties, which is sitting on the edge of the beach here eating them. Lulworth Cove, if you see it from above, is a perfect semicircle. No, it's a perfect circle. This is about my fourth or fifth time here. I have yet to come here in the summer. I've only ever come here in January, I think. And um, I don't think I've ever seen the sun here either. Shame. How pretty is this? Light is starting to fade, so we're not going to see much else. Ciao a tutti, noi stiamo andando alla casa di Nicky per guardare come stanno bene i gatti. Lily, i tipiti kitty e Not My Get. Oggi abbiamo portato dei gocciotti per i gattini. Ciao, ciao. Sì, dove stanno? Sono dentro, devi aprire la porta. Andiamo a vedere, guarda. Ehi Otto, che stai facendo? Ui! <ride> Eh, ma cosa è? Un pattino. Eh, piano piano. Fuori, non ti voglio vedere qua, se mi era troppo terribile. E tu? Non vuoi andare, sta qui. Che stai disegnando? Lilly. Lilly? Sì. Posso vedere? Sì. È Lilly! Bello Leni! Hey. 
ti piace la scatola? Itty bitty kitty, itty bitty kitty, vieni, vieni. Adesso sta rubando perfetto, sono dolci. Yippie, sto rubando i due, le tue arance, Niki. Ciao, ciao. Niki, va tutto bene a casa tua, abbiamo accarezzato, giocato, ho tu mangiato i croccantini che abbiamo portato eh, abbiamo chiacchierato e adesso ce ne andiamo ciao We decided to come to the Cotswolds and have a little explore around some of the beautiful villages here. But as soon as we arrived, it started raining. So I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. We are currently in Burford, which is a beautiful little town. I came here with my brother once and had one of the best grilled toasted cheese sandwiches that I've ever had in my life. I currently can't find the place where that was though. So I am looking for it. I really want another one. <laughs> We just walked up this little side road to see what I thought might be a hotel up here. This is Burford Priory. Apparently it is owned by Elizabeth Murdoch, the daughter of Richard Murdoch, and it has three ghosts in it. Very, very exciting. There's an old monk in the old monk's graveyard because apparently it used to be a priory, obviously. That's what it's called, the priory. Makes sense. And there was also the ghost of an old gameskeeper that would wander around the grounds in October, but he hasn't been seen since 1949. And there is also a room that has an active poltergeist and a feeling of oppression. Very, very spooky. Carla just thinks it's all very funny. Si, se sentite delle grida, non sono i fantasmi. Qua c'è una scuola con tanti bambini, quindi sono loro. Niente fantasmi. What have you found? Oh, un negozio di caramelle. Sempre bello da vedere, anche se è chiuso in questo caso. So I found the place where me and my brother had the best sandwich ever, but of course, being England, dogs are not allowed in, so we don't get to eat today. Um, very frustrating. Nothing we can do about it. Let's go somewhere else. Certo che gli inglesi per essere un popolo molto amanti dei cani non permettono di portarli in tanti posti. No. And by the way, this behind me here is the oldest pharmacy in England apparently from the 1750s. It stopped raining for now. We are, we've moved on. We are in um, Little Slaughter, which is supposed to be very pretty. And we're gonna have a little walk around here and maybe carry on walking. How pretty. I suppose the one bonus of coming somewhere like this on a day like this is that there's nobody else here pretty though. That burger is so perfect, it almost looks like a cartoon burger. Mm. But that is one of five star. So pretty here. Imagine in the summer this little stream with a little kitty paddling. And there's also a working mill down there. Carlo's just off to explore.
We are now at Burton on the Water, the third little village that we're visiting. It's raining a little bit again. Very pretty. I thought I'd been here before with my dad, but now looking at it, I haven't. I don't know where it was that we went. Mi piace questo posto, è fantastico. Posso solo immaginare quanto più bello deve essere in una giornata di pieno sole, anziché questo grigio perenne inglese. È per questo motivo che stiamo facendo poco di video perché insomma è brutto. Questa luce da schifo. Right, thought we would do some questions with Dad while we're going for a walk along the River Thames. First question is, tell me a bit about your career. <laughs> career? My career is all over. Um, I left school at 14. Um, and my first job was with a newsreel company in London. That was in 1947. In those days, there was really no television. I think there were about 2,000 sets in the UK and the service which was done by the BBC was about two or three hours a day. So I worked with the newsreel company for about four years. I was a messenger and then I used to assist the cameraman on various events. Um, I think the first big event I worked on was the Queen's Wedding in 1947 at Westminster Abbey. And my job then was to run with the films from the Abbey about a mile to Waldorf Street where the laboratories were to have the film of the wedding processed. It was then edited the same day and shown in London cinemas that afternoon. That was the only way you could see the wedding. That was my first big event. And subsequently, the next big event I worked on was the London Olympic Games at Wembley in 1948. Uh, my one memory was we were still rationed very heavily in that country. Food was hard to come by. And uh, at Wembley, I could use a press canteen and the food was wonderful. <laughs> it was like being in a foreign country. Later on, I became a cameraman when commercial television started in the UK. I trained for four months as a cameraman. And eventually I was a cameraman for about 30 years in the industry, TV cameraman traveling all over the world and we covered lots of big production for the American companies all over Europe. I think one of the first bigs was to go to Russia in 1967 in the winter of 67 um, with a, an American singer called Dinah Shaw and we were only doing the circus. We were in Minsk which was then part of Russia and heavily under communism at that time wasn't a very pleasant experience, but it was a first. And because we had the very first color cameras in Europe, we were doing what I call unique shows, some very good shows. Uh, we used to do a lot of work for NBC television, the Today Show. I think one of our first big shows for the Americas was to go to Greece. And we worked producing the Today Show every day for around 10 days. But in those days, there was no satellite television, so the programs were recorded on videotape, which was relatively new, and then flown back to New York, which would be edited and shown the following day. Okay. So that sums up the small part of the industry. Okay. Um, which leads me to my second question, which you have sort of almost answered, but not quite. Have you ever met the Queen? Yeah, I've worked, I would say, I wouldn't like to say I worked with her. She worked with me, actually. <laughs> Yes, on several occasions, and I think the, the last big occasion was she was inaugurating an undersea cable of all things, which was connecting the whole of the British Commonwealth from the UK, we went across to Canada, across Canada, down to Fiji, through Fiji, across to Australia, across Australia and down to New Zealand. 
and in those days the undersea cable was put into telecommunications as a secure means of getting messages or whatever it was between uh, the Commonwealth. So we were at a London hotel in Knightsbridge where she was to inaugurate this and we were just six of us in the room. There was the Queen and myself of course, cameraman, a sound engineer, a personal assistant and the lady operating the autocule, the teleprompter at that time. And it was a two hour show and she was very charming, put us all at ease, lots of smiles and um, I had to explain to her what was happening that we should just, when we came to at the end of each of the links between these various countries, that we should uh, we'll get up and she'd do her speech to camera and uh, that was it and it went off for around two hours and when we had finished the first thing she turned to me and she said you will tell me when I can sit down won't you <laughs> well, I thought well that's the first the Queen asked me when she can sit down <laughs> but there we go that's the way life is <laughs> okay now I want to ask you and I've got a list here I can't remember Somebody actually asked the other day, why do you make so much jam? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's totally by accident. In the last house we lived in, we had a big, not a big, but we had a grapevine that grew around the side of the house. And it produced these tiny black grapes every year. And there were quite a lot. And they all came, they were all ripe at the same time. And no one wanted to eat them. And I thought, well, one day, I wonder what I can do. And someone suggested making jam. So I did, I, I tried making it and it was quite successful. And I think the following year I made some more. And round the back of our house at that time there was an open woodland. But in the autumn there were a huge amount of blackberry bushes. And uh, I found a load of these blackberry bushes full of fruit. So I thought, well, I'll have a go at that. So I started making blackberry jam. And I think that first year I must have made about 12, maybe, I don't know, 20 pounds of jam. It's quite a lot. And it lasted a couple of years. I uh, would go to the farm to pick fresh fruit, uh, which was a regular thing. They had strawberries and plums and all sorts of things. And one year I picked a load of plums and we ended up with plum jam. So it really took off just by accident and uh, it continued. <laughs> and we're never without jam. You oh can't no. the jam you can imagine. Jam, <laughs> mom, they do name it. And if you think you can make something with it, I will always have a go. Um, okay, now tell me a story about, I can say this with literally anybody who's been famous in the last 50 years, so I'm going to say, tell me a story about Sophia Loren. I think it was 1966, I was with this company called Intertel, and we were working with a film unit which were making the film Arabesque, starring um, Sophia Loren and Gregory Peck, and we were on location in Newport, Hackmore, which is in the middle of England, at this great big mansion house, and we were shooting scenes inside, and, and every so often, uh, the producer and director of the film would come into our TV truck, which was a mobile unit, to view the footage on our monitors, on our TV screens, and I was head of cameras at that time, and uh, we were just standing at the back of the truck viewing the footage and I was aware of someone saying, excuse me, do you have a light? And I turned around, it was Sophie Loren. <laughs> so I did have a lighter and at that time I took my lighter up my pocket and as if by magic about four or five other lighters appeared from the crew trying to light a cigarette. And uh, she was very charming. Uh, yes, it was quite an experience, but uh, that's as near we got to her, I have to say. <laughs> Hang on, wait. Hello! Baby! Baby! Hey, girl! Come on! <laughs> and last question for now. During the Second World War, were you one of those London kids that was evacuated to the countryside? <laughs> yes. It was, it was in 1944. It was during the period of all the flying bombs or the doodle bugs as they became known. And I lived at a place called Sutton in Surrey. 
and there were quite a number of doodle bugs fell in the area during that period of 1944 maybe 60 or 70 I cannot remember the exact location and I think one day our school was hit and then we got a word that everyone's going to be evacuated and we had no idea where we were going because we thought it was near the end of the war and we thought we'd escape that but the doodle bug here it was pretty dodgy and uh, we were evacuated and we ended up in Devon for three months and uh, at that time my father was working in the London docks he'd been in the merchant navy and came ashore in 1941 wanted, didn't want to go on the convoys anymore and uh, there was <laughs> come on Holly <laughs> he didn't want to go on the convoys anymore so he was working ashore and we were evacuated down to Devon and at one point he came down for a break and he said look it's all quiet back home we haven't been many doodle bugs why don't you come home so I think it was about first second week in September we managed to get a train journey back to where we lived in Sutton and nice to be back in our own home that night a bomb fell at the end of the road oh dear. so that wasn't very nice so but it, it wasn't too long lived but after that it seems quite down quite a bit so last of all what is your secret to looking so young <laughs> Well, I'd like to tell you it's making jam, but it's not. <laughs> it's doing this, what I'm doing now. This is it. Yeah. This is his secret. Going out for long walks long every day. Walks. Yeah, I, I eat two meals a day. I eat breakfast. I eat dinner. I don't eat lunch. Never did. Um, that's about it. I enjoy going into London. I love going into London. I love the museums, the art galleries. There's so much to see. Every time I go to London, I will find something new and interesting. It's a wonderful city. I'm not trying to promote it. It is a wonderful city. I've yeah. travelled all over the world and there is no place like London. <laughs> and we'll leave it there and we'll finish the rest of our walk. And that's the end of this video. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed being in England with us. We're about to head back to Italy. Uh, we'll see you as we pack the car ready to go. Mm -hmm.